They say it takes 10,000 hours to master a craft, whether it's tickling the ivories, teeing off on the golf course, or in our case, ruling the pitch. But for football, those 10,000 hours might just be the warm up. You see, the top pro footballers, they're putting in some serious sweat equity. Do you know that Holland eats a cow's heart and liver to stay in his beast shape? Now nah, we ain't lying. His teammates said that he eats like a bear. Diet, gym, training. It's all part of a footballer's daily routine. But we are not talking about Hazard here. He is probably enjoying his best life out there, eating burgers that he did for four years. Now here is a fun fact about Messi's diet. Back in 2003, when Messi first arrived in Barcelona, he was just like any other 18-year-old kid. Healthy eating wasn't exactly at the top of his priority list. We're talking pizza candy and cookies galore. Messi was basically addicted to junk food, fruits, veggies, or salads. Nope, not on Messi's menu. If someone dared to put those on his plate, he'd stage a dramatic exit. Even as he hit the gym and dazzled on the field, his diet took a turn for the worse. There were rumors that if you tried to hand Messi something healthy after a workout or a game, he'd scoff and reach for fast food instead. And let's not forget his love for the fizzy stuff. Coca-Cola was practically his sidekick. He couldn't go a single day without a soda fix. But here's the twist. He was still becoming one of the world's best players. So what do you say to that? Nothing because everybody just let him do his thing. But suddenly what was once an indulgence turned into a serious problem. Messi's health was spiraling out of control and he kept it under wraps. Behind the scenes, he was battling illness almost every day. He was even falling sick during games, which was shocking everyone. So Messi decided it was time to face the music. He visited his doctor and spilled the beans about his junk food addiction. It was a pivotal moment when both Messi and the doctors realized that if he didn't change his diet, his career and life were on the line. Messi knew he had to make a change, not just for himself, but for his fans. Fortunately, he had the right people by his side. Barcelona's manager took action by removing every vending machine from the club's training ground. Messi also hired a nutritionist who became his healthy eating coach. Since then, he's not only kicked the junk food habit, but has taken his career to new heights. He's healthier, stronger, and better than ever. You guys must have seen those videos of Mess, Neymar, and Suarez having fun on the training ground. Not only on the training ground, those guys were all having fun on the field as well. But Holland has taken his training to another level. The former Dortmund sensation didn't just stumble upon success, he worked hard for it. It's not just about his clinical finishing abilities, it's also about his dedication to a rigorous training plan and an extraordinary diet that's almost as impressive as his goal scoring record. This 22 year old football prodigy fuels himself with an astonishing 6,000 calories a day and the results speak for themselves. In a revealing moment in the Holland The Big Decision documentary, which followed his journey to Manchester City, Holland spilled the beans on his nutrition secrets. He emphasized the importance of eating high-quality, locally sourced food. But what really raised eyebrows was his openness about his unconventional taste in meat. People say meat is bad for you, but which meat are they talking about? He mused. The meat you get at McDonald's? Or the local cow munching on grass right over there? I'm all in for heart and liver. But the surprises don't end there. Holland has a pre-match ritual that's quite unique. He indulges in lasagna, and not just any lasagna. This one is crafted with precision by his father, Alfie Haaland, who is a former city player himself. The story of this lasagna ritual became a hot topic on Sky Sports, with even other players jokingly asking if Alfie could whip up some lasagna for them too. No doubt he is a beast, but have you guys really seen Adama Traore? This guy is real life Hulk. You'd think he spends every waking moment in the gym pumping iron and lifting weights, right? Well, here's the surprising twist. Traore has never lifted a weight in his life. Yes, you read that correctly. In his own words, no, I haven't lifted a single weight. I know people won't believe it, but it's true, he confessed to Marka. Instead of traditional weightlifting, Traor dedicates his gym time to other activities like band-resisted jumps and weighted knee raises. But what's truly remarkable about Traore is that his exceptional agility and speed, despite his incredible physique, don't just come from the typical speed exercises you might expect. His secret sauce, as revealed in his coaching sessions with Olympic gold medalist Darren Campbell, is a regime that involves slowed down exercises. This method not only conserves energy, but also enhances his ball control. As a result, Trior now hits an average speed of 22 hour knees while tearing up the pitch for Wolves. To put it in perspective, Usain Bolt's record speed was 27.8 parts. Can you guys beat him in speed? He holds the record of subscribing to our channel in three seconds. Not quite tough, right? So do it now. But why do footballers really need to train? So, 
You know you're a dedicated footballer when you spend more time at the training ground than at your grandma's place. Sorry, Granny. Can't make it for tea today. Got some dribbling to do. And speaking of dribbling, some players are so good at it like Messi, Johan Cruyff, and Garincha. They could win an Olympic gold and dodge the defender. They just make defenders dance to their own tune. You see, in football, we've got our own version of use it or lose it. It's called use the ball wisely or the other team's taking it home. But remember, even the best players started somewhere. It's like they say, Rome wasn't built in a day and Messi didn't start with a perfect dribble. Well, he probably had a pretty good one from day one, but you get the idea. So, you want to know how the big shots of football train, huh? Well, it's not all just sweating it out on the pitch. Nope, it's a three-course meal of training magic. First up, we're talking about turning your body into a powerhouse, like the Hulk in cleats. These pros aren't just lifting weights to impress at the beach. They're crafting the engines that make them unstoppable. It's like they've got superpowers, but it's all about the cardio, running, cycling, and heart-pounding Hyatt sessions. And let's not forget the weightlifting, the kind that would make Thor proud. Have you guys seen Ronaldo at 38? He is aging like a fine wine, but he has still got those muscles that he used to show off in Camp No. I mean, Spotify Camp No. But it's not just about the muscles. It's about recovery, flexibility, and mobility. They're like yoga masters, but with a football twist. Now let's get into the finesse part, the real magic that these pros bring to the game. They've got skills that make them dribbling wizards, passing with pinpoint accuracy, and taking shots that feel like a sonic boom. And when it comes to heading and tackling, they're like masters of an ancient art, making it all seem effortless. No Chelsea player was harmed in this video. No offense to the Blues, jokes are a part of the game. Ten Hag out or Xavi out? Bring in Zidane or, let's say, the two times treble winner Pep Guardiola. Football is not all about managerial tactics. Footballers train tactically too, making the right moves to outwit their opponents. It's like planning a bank heist. But instead, you're plotting your victory on the pitch. Set pieces, formations, and strategies for every possible scenario. They've got it all. Tactical training is like a mix of football action and a brainstorming session. At lower levels, it's about building your team's chemistry and teamwork. But at the elite level, it's like being a football detective. They're dissecting videos, studying their squad, and figuring out the weak spots in their opponent's armor. It's like playing 4D chess, but with a football twist. Corner taken quickly was not Klopp's masterclass, you know. It's not all about kicking the ball for these pros. They've got another favorite place, the gym. It's like their second home, and they treat it with as much love as their favorite pizza joint. Now, in the gym, it's not just about lifting weights. It's about sculpting those muscles into works of art. They're like Michelangelo's. But instead of marble, they're chiseling their own biceps. And if football were a beauty contest, they'd be winning Mr. Muscle without a doubt. When it comes to training like a pro footballer, there's no one-size-fits-all schedule. Every player and club has their unique routine, whether you're playing in the Premier League or tearing it up in the Sunday League. For instance, the powerhouse that is Real Madrid sees their players hitting the training ground for four to five hours a day. But of course, most lower league clubs and amateur players won't have that luxury of time and energy. Now, if you're an amateur player, juggling your job, family, and social life, you're probably not going to have hours to spare on the field. You see, most amateur teams offer one or two team sessions a week during the season. These sessions cover the tactical, technical, and even some of the physical aspects of training. But if you're aiming to take your skills up a notch, you'll need to put in some extra effort. Your fitness, strength, flexibility, and agility training are going to be on your shoulders, quite literally. Footballers don't train seven days a week as well. A day off is more than just a break. It's a lifeline for any serious training program. Even the most die-hard, fit-as-a-fiddle players need to strike the right balance between training and avoiding overtraining. You see, overtraining can be a game-changer in all the wrong ways. It's like trying to score a goal with your shoelaces tied together. Not a good idea. Too much of it can lead to injuries, exhaustion, and the nightmare scenario of missing that big game on Sunday. So, keeping a balanced training schedule with ample time for recovery is like having a secret weapon in your playbook. Knowing when to say, I need a breather, is just as vital as nailing that perfect pass. But recovery isn't just about sitting on the couch and binge watching football matches. It's also about what you put in your body. A well-balanced diet is your ticket to quick recovery after a grueling match or training session. It's like the fuel your body needs to rebuild and get ready for the next round. And there you have it, the inside scoop on how pro footballers train. It's all about dedication, hard work, and a sprinkle of unique stories like Adama Traor's weightlifting confession or Erling Haaland's epic calorie-filled journey. 
But remember, your journey to football greatness starts with taking that first step onto the pitch. So, if you've enjoyed this video and want more exciting insights into the world of football, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and ring the notification bell.